Welcome to another episode of Fun with Maps. I'm your host Dan Hansen, and today in Fun with Maps, we're going to look at a really, really long country. So let's look at the map a little here. So when we look at long countries, we'll see brushes long, Brazil is long, the U.S. is long, Canada is long, but they're all much longer east to west and north to south. Today what we're going to look at is the long country of Chile. Let me zoom in there a little. Okay, so here's South America, right? Here's Chile. Long, 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 long. So it's got the Pacific Ocean on this side. It's got the Andes Mountains on the east. It's bordered up here by Peru, Bolivia, Here's Argentina, and then you've got the ocean down here. So, and this is, as we'll see, called the Drake Passage down here. Long strip there. It's unique in these long countries like the U.S. and Canada, Russia, Brazil, that its length is north-south like this. It, um, it covers about 291,000 square miles and you can see it's in the length it's really narrow okay that's chile it's actually also the world's most southernmost country that's on the mainland so you can see it goes way down here that's on the main line and that is uh, more south than its neighbor argentina which is next in line australia and new zealand um, south africa you know, south africa is uh, more north than uh, the south of Chile. Uruguay, Brazil, down here, uh, Lesotho and Namibia in uh, Africa, and Paraguay. So those are the most southernmost countries uh, on the mainland, but Chile, Chile goes the most southern. Chile's got about uh, 18 million people. It's an affluent area, it's a World Bank, high economy, a high income economy, it's got high living standards. Um, in South America, it's one of the most economically and socially stable, uh, prosperous nations. Right in the middle here, pretty much the middle, is the capital, Santiago. We're going to look at that more. So, th there's various theories on the, where the name came from Chile. Um, used to be C H I L I, now it's C H I L E. Uh, there was a Spanish uh, chronicler who said there was a, uh, a, a chief, an Inca chief in the Aconcagua, um, it's a mountain, whose, uh, whose name was Tili, and it evolved into Chile. Now, the Aconcagua is a mountain in the Andes Mountains in the Mendoza province, that's Mendoza right there in Argentina. Um, it's the highest mountain in the Americas, higher than Mount McKinley and you know, all. It's, it's, uh, it's the highest outside Asia, actually. Uh, it's the highest in both the southern and western hemisphere, and it's about 20, over 22,800 feet. So here in the Andes here, this Akangawa, Akangagua, sorry for the, I'm gonna be mispronouncing things all episode, but um, right in here in the Andes is this huge, uh, huge mountain, the biggest one in, uh, in the Americas. So it's just, it's like 70 miles here. It's, it's nine miles from the border of Chile. And it's, it's called one of the seven summits of the seven continents. So um, there's a theory that there was a tribal chief there uh, named Chile that became Chile. We don't know. Others say um, the name Chile came from a Native American a word meaning either seagulls or end of the earth. Uh, the Mapuche people called it, uh, Chile said, where the land ends. So you can see we got this vast expanse of ocean here. You could see where... There's no land out there, that's a good name for it. So, one name I like, a variation, is there's a, uh, a, a Mapuche imitation of the warble of a local bird that goes Chile, Chile, and maybe they call the Chile for that. So, the Mapuche, we're gonna look at them. They're an indigenous people of uh, what's central and south Chile in here, uh, and part of Argentina. This, this area here is Patagonia. You may remember it's both Chile and Argentina. Um, it's sparsely populated, it's shared by Chile and Argentina. That's Patagonia. And 
let's look at what else. Here we've got, you know, you got a lot of rivers coming from the Andes Mountains that are along here. And there's the ocean. So the rivers, the little rivers are coming from the Andes into the ocean. And one, the Mapocho River, basically Mapocho means water that uh, penetrates the land. It goes um, from the Andes west and it divides the capital city of Santiago into two. So here's Santiago again. There's this uh, Mapocho River that divides it in two. It's going from the Andes into the, um, into the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so the older spelling of Chile, C-H-I-L-I, -I, was in use in English until like at least 1900, and then they switched over to Chile, C-H-I-L-E, which is what we, we know it as today. So this is Chile on the mainland. Chile also controls Easter Island, which way out here, that's Easter Island, and also um, Sala y Gomez Island, that's the easternmost islands of this French Polynesia here. So here, here's Easter Island, here's uh, um, Sala y Gomez Island, and that's under Chilean control. We're going to uh, uh, look at Easter Island in a separate episode of Fun with Maps because it's pretty fascinating. But that's pretty far out. It gives them a lot of uh, expanse in the Pacific Ocean here. So they incorporated these islands here uh, in like 1888 and here's the Juan Fernandez archipelago the the islands here um, you know like 370 miles off of the mainland so they also control these small islands here that are only inhabited by some fishermen really um, and but they do claim they give Chile this whole expanse here you know they're this narrow country here but suddenly they have all of this territorial water in the Pacific Ocean there so they also claim about 480,000 square miles uh, of Antarctica under a Chilean Antarctic Treaty so that claim is suspended and there's some politics behind it we don't get into politics here on front of maps so we'll ignore that for now and we will cover Eastern Island in a, an upcoming uh, episode of fun with maps so let's take a look now in detail in Chile and some fun with maps facts about it and uh, we're gonna see some interesting connections uh, between Chile and the state of Texas and some famous Chilean people you may have recognized from TV like in Jersey Shore and NCIS and even Saturday Night Live so enjoy this episode of fun with maps as we look at the long country of Chile okay so here's a map of uh, South America and here's Chile long narrow strip all along here on the west right in there let's zoom in a little uh, as I said let's get that centered okay so up here here's Chile here's Peru up in the north Here's Bolivia, and you see how chilly this area here cuts off Bolivia from the ocean. Here's Argentina. It's uh, mate all the way down for this whole length here. And down here is the Drake Passage. Okay, here's the Atlantic Ocean. Here's the uh, Pacific Ocean. We'll see the Andes Mountains here. But there's Peru, Bolivia, Argentina, Drake Passage. Now, let's look at the, the Drake Passage. It's a body of water between Cape Horn in South America and the South Shetland Islands of Antarctica. So that's the Drake Passage. Okay. It connects the southwestern part of the Atlantic Ocean with the southeastern part of the Pacific Ocean and extends into the Southern Ocean there. So let's look at uh, that's a here's a really good drawing picture um, by someone named Giovanni Fattori thank you for that um, and this shows the boundary points there was a treaty of peace and friendship 1984 between Chile and Argentina and here's the boundary points A B C D E F um, of the Drake Pass so here up here's Chile there's Argentina Atlantic Ocean Pacific Ocean here's the Drake Passage Okay, here's the South Shetland Islands down here, 
the Southern Osage. So when we talk about the Drake Passage, this is what we mean. So that borders Chile down here. And of course, here's Cape Horn in there. Okay, so Santiago, or also known as Santiago de Chile, to differentiate to differentiate it with other cities called Santiago. It's the capital and largest city of Chile. It's one of the largest cities in, in North and South America. It's the center of Chile's most densely populated region, the Santiago metropolitan region. It's got a total population of seven million, about six million of those live in the city's uh, continuous urban area. And it's entirely located in the Central Valley. So here's a, a, a picture, a drawing, of the 1541 founding of Santiago. It's a painting by a guy named Pedro Lira, um, and that's Pedro de Valdivia and Juan Martin de Candia proclaiming the city of Santiago, Santiago de Chile. Okay, so that's uh, the capital, centrally located, most populous city, mo probably most important uh, city in Chile. Um, the name of Santiago uh, originates in a name chosen by the, the Spanish conqueror Pedro de Valdivia when he found it in 1541. Um, he named it after James the Great, the patron saint of Spain. Okay, and, and let's see here. Um, Chile is a very uh, Roman Catholic country uh, to this day. Here, uh, Statue of the Virgin Mary at San Cristobal Hill. It's one of the main symbols of the city. That's about 45 feet high. So anyway, Valdivia honored James the Great, the patron saint of Spain. And in Spanish, uh, the name of the saint it can be different ways. Diego, Jamie, Jaime, Jacoba, Santiago. Uh, so here it's uh, James the Great is Santiago. It's been the capital of Chile since colonial times. Uh, from most places in the city, you can see the Andes Mountains, and because Chile is so narrow, it's, it's Santiago is within an hour of both the mountains and the Pacific Ocean. So it's a uh, it's a very big, huge, modern city. Um, this is a picture by Dinsel of the Gran Torre Santiago Castanera Center. Uh, it's part of the Costanera Center complex. This is the tallest building in Ibero-America. Now, by Ibero-America, I mean uh, the region comprising countries or territories where Spanish or Portuguese are the predominant languages. So, uh, most of South America, Central America, were Spanish, or, or like in Brazil, where Portuguese, Portuguese are the predominant languages. So, that's um, this is the tallest building in that region of Ibero-America. So Santiago is the cultural, political, financial center of Chile. Uh, it's home to the regional headquarters of many multinational corporations. Um, it's the seat of the President of the Republic of Chile. And this is the, uh, the La Manita, the Palacio de La Manita. Um, where the President of the Republic of Chile uh, works. The Chilean Executive and Judiciary are located in Santiago, but Congress meets mostly in nearby Valparaiso, which is a little to the north. Here's a fun with maps fact. Santiago will host the 2023 Pan American Games, and hopefully we'll be back from the virus and we'll be able to have games like that again. Okay. Here's a topographic map of Chile. Um, Someone, BYSA 3.0, thank you for that. You know, it seems like ever since we did the Fun with Maps episode about Indonesia, we've been talking about the Ring of Fire, that uh, Pacific Ring of Fire, uh, where all the tectonic activity and volcanoes are. Now we're looking at the uh, far eastern end of the Ring of Fire, here where Indonesia was in the west. So due to Santiago's location on the Pacific Ring of Fire, it's, it's the boundary of a couple of plates, the Nazca and South American plates, so it gets a lot of tectonic activity. And the first earthquakes on record to strike San Diego occurred in 1575, just 34 years after its official founding. Here's a, a fun with maps fact. In 1647, there was an earthquake in, in Santiago that devastated the city, 
and a, a guy named Heinrich von Kleist wrote a novel about it, a famous novel called The Earthquake in Chile. Okay. So in 1960, the Valdivia earthquake and the 1985 El Garobo earthquake both caused damage in San Diego, Santiago too. So what they did smartly, they developed some strict building codes with a view to minimize future earthquake damage. And it paid off, because in 2010, Chile was struck by the sixth largest earthquake ever recorded. It was an 8.8 .8 on the scale. Sixth largest ever recorded. 525 people died, 13 were in Santiago, and it was like $20 billion US dollars of damage, uh, 370,000 homes damaged, all that. But because they implemented those building codes after the earlier earthquakes, that even though it was huge, 8.8, the damage is far less than uh, it could have been and even a few weeks earlier when that uh, terrible earthquake happened in Haiti where at least 100,000 people died um, because of their foresight with the building codes they didn't have that uh, as much damage as they could have. So you can't talk about the map of Chile without talking about the Andes Mountains. Um, here's a map of South America and shows the Andes Basically, they run along the western coast of South America, um, usually parallel to the Pacific Ocean, the whole continent. So in Spanish, it's Cordillero de los Andes. Please excuse my Spanish, it's terrible. The Andes are the longest continental mountain range in the world. So it's a continuous highland along this uh, western ridge of South America, as we, as we saw. Um, it's 4,300 miles long and it's between 120 and 430 miles wide. The average height is about 13,000 feet, so it's, it's big. So it goes through seven uh, South American countries, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Peru, Bolivia, Chile, and of course Argentina on the other side. So here's the Andes, all those. and. In the Andes, you got several high plateaus, um, some of which have you know major cities like Quito in Ecuador and Bogota and La Paz. So, the Altiplano Plateau is the world's second highest after the plateau in Tibet. So, most of that is in Bolivia, but its southern part lies in Chile and Argentina. So, the second highest plateau in the world um, is it in the north of Chile. There, let's see uh, a picture of the Andes from a plane. This is. Uh, between Santiago and Mendoza uh, in the summer. That was someone, uh, it's a public domain picture. They took it from a plane flying from Santiago to Mendoza, Argentina one summer. Here's a fun with maps fact. The peak uh, of Chimborazo, which is in the Ecuadorian Andes, it's farther from the Earth's center than any other location on the Earth's surface because of the equatorial bulge resulting from the Earth's rotation. So the peak here in the Andes and the Ecuadorian Andes is farthest from the Earth's center as any other place in the Earth's surface. So, you know, farther than the Himalayas and all that. Here's another uh, fun with maps fact. The world's highest volcanoes are in the Andes, including Ojos del Salado on the Chile-Argentine border. Argentina border, it's, that's 22,615 feet. So. Andes Mountains, really impressive, um, uh, dominant, dominant geographical feature of Chile, Argentina, and the other countries we mentioned. Y you know, you may be familiar with the gauchos of Argentina and Uruguay, but do you know about the Huaso? The Huaso, um, it's a Chilean skilled horseman. It's like the American cowboy or a Mexican charro or the gauchos I just mentioned from Argentina and Uruguay. This is a a 19th century painting of, a, of Chilean huasos. They're found all over central and southern Chile. Um, the major difference between the huaso and the gaucho is that huasos are involved in farming as well as cattle herding. So huasos ride horses. They typically wear a straw hat called a chupala. They also wear poncho called a manta or a chamanta over a short waist jacket. Um, here's a picture, a painting It's called The Huaso and the Washerwoman. It was from 1835 by someone named Mauricio Rogendis. So you can get a little, see the hat and the, all that. Um, 
Huasos are an important part of Chilean folklore culture. They're a vital part of parades, fiestas, holidays, and popular music. Um, you'll see here in this picture, and I'm pronouncing this wrong, I'm sure. It's a... Uh, uh, this is a, a dance, a national dance of Chile called a cueca. Um, this is a, a, an oil painting. It's from the collection of the Presidency of the Republic of Chile. It's public domain. And it's called Zama Cueca by Manuel Antonio Caro. So I used to say the Cueca is a national dance in Chile. Uh, a female Huaso is called a Huasa, but they usually term, use the term China uh, instead of Huasa. So here's the dance. And in the dance, you have a, a, a in the uh, Cueca dance, you have a, a China who is being coy and she's courted by the uh, Huaso who is persistent. And they're both in their traditional clothing and it's, you usually have this at all the cultural occasions. So, um, here's a fun with maps fact. In Chile, the term huaso or ahuasado, which means in a huaso way, it's also used kind of disparagingly to refer to people without manners or less sophisticated, you know, than an urbanite. Kind of like a, a redneck in U.S. English. So that's the huasos. I'm just going to touch on the Incas because... Um, we'll cover them more when we look at some of the other South American countries, actually Peru and in there. But um, this is a uh, um, the four quarters of the Inca Empire. So you can see the uh, the blue part is there in Chile, Colesuyu. Again, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Sorry. And it's by an English Wikipedia user, Euro history teacher. So thanks for that. So. Basically, as you know, the Inca Empire was the largest empire in pre-Columbian America. Uh, it arose from the Peruvian highlands somewhere in the early 13th century. And it was basically its last stronghold was conquered by the Spanish in 1572. But from 1438 to 1533, the Incas uh, incorporated a large portion of Western South America. You can see it here. Um, the colors there. Um, centered on the Andes Mountains, really. So it joined Peru, part of Ecuador, part of Bolivia, some of Argentina, what is today Chile, and even the southwesternmost tip of uh, Colombia. So that Inca state back then, around 1500, was comparable in size to the historical empires of uh, Eurasia. But we'll cover the Incas more in, when we do Peru and other countries, other maps. So Chile has a very interesting history. I encourage you to look into it. We're all, just like with the Incas, we're only going to touch on it here, though, because there's just too much. So basically, though, in 1520, Ferdinand Magellan, we've all heard of them, he tried to circumnavigate the globe. He discovered the Southern Passage, now named after him, the Strait of Magellan, and he was the first European to set foot on what is now Chile. Okay, So the Strait of Magellan, it's a navigable sea route separating South America to the north and Tierra del Fuego in the south. So here's Chile, South America, here's Tierra del Fuego, um, and the strait here, here's the Atlantic Ocean. So instead of going all the way around here, Cape Horn, all that stuff to get to the Pacific, the Strait of Magellan, you go through here, cut through here, through here, you come out through Chile and you're in the Pacific Ocean. So you cut a lot of uh, uh, sailing time off there. So on All Saints Day Magellan planted a flag, claimed the land on behalf of the King of Spain. Um, Tierra del Fuego, Fuego here, that's Spanish for land of fire of course. It's an archipelago um, it's, and it's divided between Chile and Argentina. I think Argentina has most of it. I think it's like something like 90 to percent to 10 percent. But here's Tierra del Fuego and remember from previous episodes of Fun with Maps, an archipelago is basically just a group of islands. So that's Tierra del Fuego. Um, let's look at another picture. Okay, so here you can see again, um, here's Chile, Argentina, 
Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. So if you're coming along here and you want to, you're in the Atlantic, you want to get to the Pacific, you'd have to go all the way around down here to get over here. But here with the Straits of Magellan, you come up here, go through here, and you're in the, you save a lot of uh, space. And here's, you know, Tierra del Fuego, here's Chile, Argentina, all of that. Um, here's a fun with maps fact. Magellan originally named it um, Estrecho de Todos los Santos, which is the Strait of All Saints. But the the king who financed his exploration, Charles V, changed the name to Straits of Magellan to honor him. So it's difficult to navigate. It's you know it's frequent narrow and unpredictable winds and currents and all. But it's so much. Um, better than the Drake Passage and going around Cape Horn down here. So before, you know, you had the Beagle Channel, but before uh, the construction of the Panama Canal, it was one of the few sea routes between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. So, so here's a picture of Pedro Vol de Valdivia. Uh, they call him the Conqueror of Chile. It's a public domain painting. Um, he founded the city of Santiago February 12, 1541. They didn't, the Spanish didn't find the gold and silver they were looking for, but they did realize the agricultural potential of, of the Central Valley of Chile there, and uh, Chile became part of the Spanish Empire then. So, Spain conquered and colonized the region in the mid-16th century. They replaced the Incas, but they didn't conquer the uh, independent Mapuche, who inhabit what is now south-central Chile. So here's a picture of... Uh, some Mapuche women of Tirue, sorry about that. Um, it's by the Ministerio Bien Nacionales. Um, thank you for that picture. So, um, the Mapuche, a group of indigenous inhabitants, present day South Central Chile, Southwestern Argentina, um, the indigenous people there, including parts of present day Patagonia. Now, Patagonia. You remember from your geography um, that's this area here okay both Chile and Argentina but it's a southern tip here's Santiago up here here's Buenos Aires up there you know the two capital cities but down here this southern tip of South America is called Patagonia and you know they're that's where some of the Ma uh, Mapuche are. So here's where the map really makes a difference in Chile's history. Um, so they're cut off to the north by a desert. And we'll talk about this uh, desert here. Uh, in the south you have the Mapuche. In the east you have the Andes Mountains. And in the west you have the Pacific Ocean. So um, this middle area here, Santiago and all, it, uh, Chile became one of the most centralized, homogenous colonies in Spanish America because, like say, the desert, the mountains, the ocean, and the Mapuche people there. So when Napoleon made his brother as king of Spain in 1808, um, the colony here wanted to become independent. So they had a, uh, a national junta, name of Ferdinand. Um, they proclaimed Chile an autonomous republic within the Spanish monarchy. That happened on September 18th. So in memory of this day, Chile celebrates its national day on September 18th each year. So, and after these events, a movement for total independence uh, took place uh, under the command of um, General Jose Miguel Carrera. That's a posthumous portrait of uh, Jose Miguel Carrera, and he and his brothers led this uh, uh, led this effort. He was former Spanish military and considered one of the founders of independent Chile. He was probably the most important leader of the Chilean War of Independence during the period of the Patria Vieja or the Old Republic. Um, Spain tried to do a the Reconquista. And there's prolonged struggles, and there, you know, is it infighting as there always is. And uh, this guy Bernardo 
O'Higgins challenged Carrera's leadership, and they had warfare, and Carrera was in prison, and you know um, he partnered up with uh, uh, Jose de San Martin, who was a hero of the Argentine War of Independence, and they led an army across the Andes into Chile. They defeated the Royalists. So on February 12, 1818, Chile was proclaimed an independent republic. Now, the Boundary Treaty of 1881 between Chile and Argentina confirmed the Chilean sovereignty over the Strait of Magellan. So, got the strait down there, and you can see that's part of Chile, and that's because of this Boundary Treaty. And they had a war with Peru and Bolivia, called the War of the Pacific. Up here, Bolivia, up there, Peru. And Chile expanded its territory northward by almost one-third. And when they did that, they really they cut off Bolivia's access to the Pacific. And they got a bunch of nitrate deposits, and uh, they had a lot of uh, affluence because of that. That war where they got this land from Bolivia and Peru there. So you can see... From this map, this is a public domain map showing Chile's territorial gains after the War of the Pacific, uh, 1879 to 1883. So, before, Chile went up to here. Okay? And then after the war, they got this territory, they got this from Bolivia, to cut Bolivia off, and they got this area from Peru. So they really extended northward and got a lot of terrier there. Um, and there's been arguments between the Chileans and Peruvians since the 1800s because, you know, some of the coastal lines. And, of course, the history marched on. There's a lot of history, and I encourage you to look at it. You know, in the 60s and 70s, you're probably aware there were leftist turns and rightist turns and all kinds of political polarization and turmoil. Um, this is uh, Salvador Allende. He was a... a, a physician and socialist politician. He was a president from 1970. He was the first Marxist to be elected president in a liberal democracy in Latin America. And he only got about 35% of the vote. It wasn't a majority, but he was the first. And there was a military coup which overthrew him September 11, 1973. And, you know, as the bombs were coming in the presidential palace, supposedly he committed suicide. And the junta was led by um, Augusto Pinochet, General Augusto Pinochet, and he took control of the country. And of course, there's lots more interesting history of Chile, but that's for another podcast. This is Fun with Maps. So let's look at some Fun with Maps facts. This is the coat of arms of uh, Chile. Um, it's got two of the national animals here. This is the, uh, the condor. You don't know a condor. It's a very large bird. Lives up in the mountains. And this is a, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, humel, but it's basically a white-tailed deer. It's an endangered species. What I think is really cool, look at this, uh, um, the legend under here, por la razón o la fuerza. And basically that means by reason or by force. So that's, that's pretty interesting. And then you've got, that's the coat of arms of Chile. If you look at the flag of Chile, looks kind of familiar. Um, Fun Maps fact here, it's also known in Spanish as La Estrella Solitaria, which is the Lone Star. And of course, Texas here in the U.S. is the Lone Star State. It's got a similar flag to that of uh, Chile with the Lone Star, although the, uh, the flag of uh, Chile is 21 years older than the flag of um, Texas. Another Fun with Maps fact, the patron saints of Chile are Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and St. James the Greater, which is Santiago. And in 2005, Pope Benedict XVI canonized, canonized Alberto Hurtado, who became the country's second native Roman Catholic saint after Teresa de los Andes. And another fun with maps fact, the Spanish spoken in Chile is distinctively accented and unlike that to some degree of neighboring South American countries. So. It's a little different if you're if you're learning Spanish. Uh, the Chilean Spanish might be a little different from what you learn in the classroom. The government of Chile made English mandatory for students in fifth grade and above in public schools, and most private schools in Chile start teaching English from from kindergarten on. Here's another fun with maps fact: 
Um, you know, we saw how in the War of Pacific, Chile got this territory up here, some of that. Um, that's the Atacama Desert. So it spreads across the northern part of the country. And what's interesting, it's the driest desert in the world. Okay? And one of the mountains there, Ojas del Salado, about 7,000 feet in this desert, it's the uh, highest active volcano in the world. It's also Chile's tallest mountain. It's the second highest in the western hemisphere and southern hemisphere. And it's small crater lake at about 7,000 uh, meters. It's the world's highest lake. So this is the Atacama Desert, the driest in the world. Like I say, this is land that uh, from the war of the Pacific. It's in the north of Chile there. Another fun with maps fact about Chile, uh, copper mining makes up about 20% of their gross domestic product and 60% of exports. Um, Escondida is the largest copper mine in the world and it produces about 5% of the global supplies. And Chile produces about a third of the world's copper. But I think most of us remember in 2010 watching on TV when the uh, 33 miners were trapped underground. And it was August 5th, 2010, and an access tunnel collapsed at the San Jose Copper and Gold Mine in northern Chile. So these 33 people were trapped, 33 guys trapped 2,300 feet below the ground. Um, and I know the world was watching and praying, and um, this is a public domain picture of six of the rescuers, uh, the sign reads, uh, Mission Accomplished, Chile. So the Chilean government organized this rescue effort. They located the miner 17 days later. And then two months later, on October 13th, over a period of about 24 hours, all 33 men were brought to the surface. And that was carried on live te television around the world. I remember watching it, uh, praying, and it was just such a great accomplishment. So um, that was a great accomplishment. So Chile has been called a country of poets. Gabriela Mistral was the first Latin American to receive a Nobel Prize in Literature. That was back in 1945. Chile's most famous poet is this guy, Pablo Neruda. Neruda. He got the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1971. Um, he's got an extensive library of works, romance, nature, politics. And he's got three homes uh, that are popular tourist destinations in Isla Negra, Santiago, and Valparaiso. The best-selling Chilean novelist is Isabel Allende. Um, she's been called the world's most widely read Spanish language author. And that's one end of the spectrum, these great poets and writers. At the others, you have um, people from Chile like Nicole Polizzi. You may know her as Snooki from the American reality television show Jersey Shore. She was born in Santiago. And Horatio Sanz was a Chilean-born American actor, comedian. He was on Saturday Night Live in the... Uh, 1998 to 2006. But this is someone you may recognize, a little more popular show. Um, this is Cote de Pablo. She was the character Ziva David in, uh, in the CBS television series NCIS. She was born in Santiago, came to the U.S. at age 10, studied acting. Um, they asked what her, about her name. She, uh, she said, quote, well, my real name is Maria Jose de Pablo. But when I was in fifth grade, people couldn't pronounce it, so I told them to call me Cody. Then I found out there was a beauty line called Cody, and I hated that. So I changed it to Cota. A lot of people don't get it, but in Chile, if your name is Maria Jose, they call you Cody. So, so there you have from the great poets and writers of Chile to some of the uh, television stars with uh, Chilean roots. So that's something. What do you, what do you think? That's, that's a look at the map of Chile. It's pretty fascinating. And when we get to the, our next episode of Fun with Maps on Easter Island, it's going to be even more fascinating. It's way out there, and they have some really unique in the world uh, uh, attractions in Easter Island, which is under Chilean control. So um, that's coming soon. If you enjoyed this episode want to see more, please click like below and consider subscribing so you never miss an episode. Uh, until then, I'm your host, Dan Hansen. This is Fun with Maps, and I hope you keep on having fun with maps.